Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mr. Hicks Podcast. We are here, getting it again, once again, time and time again, enjoying what I'm doing right now, loving this life. Hope everybody else is too. So we're going to get in here. We're going to do a little NBA talk tonight. We're going to, of course, going to be almost exclusively football coming up really soon. So getting all this NBA stuff out of the way and really going to start doing my research on NFL football. I really kind of have fallen off of NFL football. I've been into high school and college football so much, but it's time to start getting back into it. So let me do this NBA stuff right now because I've seen some stuff in the media that I think is really interesting and I want to talk about it. So I'm going to believe that uh, there's going to be a lockout. There's going to be an NBA lockout real soon. Uh, and, and matter of fact, the CBA, the current CBA, ends in uh, the end of the 2023-2024 season. And I'm telling these players, y'all better start saving your pennies right now because they're about to lock you out. Uh, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, they're going to make sure they get their way because some of these players have acted a fool and manipulated the system to the point where these owners are really pissed and they're coming for you. So... Whatever it is that you think that you can do, whatever you've been getting away with, whatever's been in your contract, you better enjoy it now because a lot of this stuff is going away. I can tell you right now. So I can tell you right now, any other tell you that owners, owners don't like cutting million dollar checks and then have somebody tell them what they're going to do, and what they're not going to do. I'm telling you right now, I'm not a billionaire. I'm not even a millionaire. I'm a thousandaire. And if I'm paying you hundreds of dollars, if I'm paying you dozens of dollars, and you tell me, try to tell me what you're not going to do for the money that I told you? Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. And here's the problem is that you can't fire them. So you get the, the, the NBA, you got guaranteed contracts. So you left in situations where you got to be like, I got to play the dude. Or I got to play the dude. One or the other. And now some teams are getting to the point where they're like, you know what? We got to pay you, but we don't have to play you. So everybody goes, people are going to start getting the John Wall treatment just to go home. So... And uh, so my big, my belief right now is that guys like Sugar Booty Ben Simmons, uh, John Wall, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, now Kevin Durant, uh, have gotten over, gotten such big contracts and done, done teams so crazy that teams are like, we're going to have to do some legislation, put some things on the books to make sure that we don't get hosed over like this anymore. So, so we'll give an example, Kyrie. Kyrie basically doesn't play basketball when he feels... Uh, whatever he feels like his principles are being violated, something going on in the world, may not even have anything to do with him. He might just decide that the whales in Africa or, or, or the, the, the zebras in, in, in Australia are, are being violated some kind of way and be like, well, I don't think that I can play right now because this is bigger than basketball. Let me tell you something. If you're paying me not just, multi not just multiple millions of dollars because he's getting like max money to decide that stuff is bigger than basketball. When you're getting max money, there shouldn't be but a handful of things that are bigger than basketball and none of the stuff that he sat out for are on that list. Here's a list of a couple of things that you can sit out for. Your mama dies. You cannot play. Understand. Um, your kid is being born. Understand. You cannot play. It, outside of somebody in your family, very close to your family, dying or you're having a child, if I'm paying you $20 million a year, I expect you to be playing basketball. That's what I expect. And the other, by the way, I don't think that's a ridiculous thing to ask for. A 20-year Air Force veteran. So when you got people that are out there not seeing their kids being born, uh, not being able to go to funerals, not being able to see their families for years at a time, and then somebody who plays a game makes $20 million a year and goes, you know what, I, I, this whole you know January 6th thing is really bothering me. This is bigger than basketball. I don't, I don't think I should be, anybody should be playing. No, you better take your behind the work, man. Don't really want to hear that. Uh, so uh, Ben Simmons, you know my, how my feelings about Sugar Booty. It's my best show. It's my, my favorite show. I still listen to it sometimes this day. Just to listen to me rant about Ben Simmons. So like, so Ben Simmons tried to, uh, Bully, Sugar Booty, tried to force his way out of Philadelphia Claiming he had uh, knee problems, back problems, mental health problems. He had a letter from his OB guy saying that his, you know, his private parts, his private parts were not doing too good for him, so he couldn't play basketball. He finally did get. I mean, he went out on his teammates and said his teammates weren't good teammates and all that. Showed up to practice with his phone and it was just such a mess. <clears throat> Pardon me. So um, so then he got traded, and he still didn't play basketball. All the problems that he supposedly had in Philadelphia got out of Philadelphia. Still didn't play. 
And my big thing is like, so, and by the way, um, if you were so injured, how did that trade go through? Just, just, just off top. I just, I never, I don't think I brought this up on the show ever. But for real, when you get traded, you have to get, you have to be accepted by the other team's doctor. The other team's doctor. You got to pass a physical in order to get traded. So if you go to the other team and they go give you a physical and they say that you're not good, that, that voids that contract. That voids that deal. So you didn't play for the Sixers and then you got traded to the Nets and somehow the Nets doctors cleared you. And then when you went to got on the team, you were like, well, I'm still not going to play. No, if the Nets doctors cleared you, you were clear to play. And you still didn't play. And they let you. And they let you not play. That's the same, the kind of punk stuff that I'm talking about organization-wide. James Harden has eaten his way off of two NBA teams. He got match money from the Houston Rockets and then showed up to camp completely out of shape <clears throat> and like looking like he was wearing a fat suit for an 80s comedy uh, like, like a rom-com movie, um, and then just and then did the same thing when he got to Brooklyn. Just 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 got disinterested and fat, and didn't rebound and didn't shoot, and then got to got traded to the Sixers, and suddenly he remembered how to shoot. <clears throat> Pardon me. So what else we got? We got uh, John Wall, who was such a malcontent that the Rockets basically voluntarily paid this fool to stay home. He is getting uh, like 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 thirty million dollars to sit on the couch. Now, mind you, I might not know all the details on that, but I know he got paid, and I know he wanted to play, and at a certain point, they just told him, don't come back. Like, they had some young players, they were just like, we would rather uh, get these young players playing time, see what we got in these young guys, because what's that, if John Wall comes back and he plays for you, what's going to happen? He's actually going to win games. He's going to end up winning more games than you want him to win, because they got a bunch of draft picks. So it's like, I don't need you to win these games enough for us to be like the, the eighth seed in the West and then just to get bounced anyway. And then we end up with the number 14 pick. No, I would rather just play a bunch of young guys and completely tank and end up getting a butter draft pick. So, John Wall, you're a pain. We're really bad. But if you're going to be bad, you need to suck in the NBA so that, that draft pick is as good as it can be so that you can get a top, uh, like a lottery pick. So, they paid the man basically to stay home. And now you got Kevin Durant. Now, Kevin Durant has always done his thing on the basketball court. I'm never going to say he's tanked or that he gave up on his team or anything like that because he's, he's always shown up and done what he was supposed to do on the court, and I respect him for that. However, he has made some really poor decisions as to where he wants to go and what he, who he wants to associate with. So, like, he left the Warriors on some, you know, like, Draymond disrespected him or what have you. you know, just your little sensitive little boy feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be the man of my own team. I want my respect, that type of deal. So like, here's the thing. Let me. I'm gonna speak on this for just a sec because I'm like, when he left uh, Oklahoma State and went to the Warriors, after the Warriors, after the Warriors bounced them out of the playoffs, I will for now and forever believe that was one of the softest things to ever happen in sports. Like just, just on some man stuff. I can't believe you did that. But here's the thing. Who cares what I think? Once you went there. And you won championships. Like, believe me, a lot of things, people do bad things in sports and a lot of things in life. But if you win enough or you make enough money because of it, nobody eventually, nobody will care. They won't care. I, I, there's plenty of people in sports have done garbage things and things that would, in most cases would be considered to be unacceptable. But when they won enough, enough time passed and nobody cared. And then for you to leave and then go... Now it's on you when you decide to go to Brooklyn and you bring in Harden and you bring in KD. You can't blame nobody but yourself for that. You can't blame nobody but yourself for that. And now for you to be demanding a trade with four years left on your deal. Like, when they made that deal, they did not say, hey, Kevin, I'm going to give you all this money, but if it doesn't work out a year in, you can go ahead and ask me for a trade. We'll go ahead and, you know, we'll go ahead and let you out, trade you wherever you want to go. It ain't no thing. Nobody says anything like that. When you decide to take that money, certain things come with it and some things don't come with it. And for you to demand something, you got to have some leverage. And at four years on your deal, you have no leverage. And if I was in that, you would just be playing or you would be sitting down. I'm not trading you because there's no value for Kevin Durant. It's not that you're not going to get value, but somebody can give you their whole roster. 
and it's not unless you're one of a few things. It's very, there's very. You're not getting Kevin Durant type route value back. You you take all them draft picks to be able to find a Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is a once in a generation player. You're not going to find another one of those, no matter how many first round picks you get. Most likely, so. No, I don't trade him. No only do I not trade him, I'm mad that he's demanding a trade. You signed with a bad franchise, is what you should get. So it used to be considered to be like, okay, you, oh my God, he's got two years left in this deal and he's demanding a trade. He's doing it with four. With four. And it's like, he call his bluff. So I'm like, no, you're, you're playing, we're not trading you. We're, you're going to play here, you're not going to play nowhere. What's he going to do? Not play basketball? He's 34 years old. At 34 years old, he does not have the time or the money. He, got, he only had so much time to be an elite basketball player and make this money. So he's only got so much time. He's only got this legacy. These guys, so his legacy is already sketchy right now. So it's like you know he's gonna he's gonna mess that up even worse by not playing basketball. So that's on him. So now, now that I have said all that, because it makes me sound like I am not pro player or that I'm not about these dudes getting this money. I'm 100 percent about dudes getting this money. Because here's my my banger. The one thing I want to say about this is that. With all the nonsense, it's still the owner's fault. And here's why. It's the same dumb franchise doing the same dumb stuff. Like overpaying people. Like when you paid, when the Wizards gave John Wall a ridiculous contract that had a, had like 43 years on the back end of it out of a player option. What player in what situation is not going to opt in to $40 million? In and he's in Texas now, so there's no state tax in Texas. There's a lot of money straight into his pocket. The fact, same thing for Westbrook. Westbrook, oh, Westbrook opts into his player option. Where else was he going to get $4 million with the way he's playing right now? $40 million? $40 million for a dude that jacks up threes like a junior varsity player and has about the same uh, uh, about the same average of hitting him. So, um uh, the player like giving them the trade demands, stuff like that. Bad franchises doing that. Oh, you want me to trade you? Okay. You want me to bring this guy in if you're to play with? Okay, sure. Um, trading away like four or five years of first round bad picks. There's multiple teams that have no the Nets, the like, like the, the Nets right now, the Clippers, the Lakers have like no first round picks because you were lazy and wanted to bring in this player and this player wants to play with this player and we don't have anybody to trade him. The only thing we can do is give him draft picks. So now you have no draft picks until 3075. So congratulations. These are bad franchises. So they didn't abuse the negotiations. So because they're stupid, they have to legislate things and put things into law to be like, okay, well, nobody can do that now. We did this dumb thing and to save us from ourselves, we're gonna make sure that nobody does this anymore. So to me, it's just like parents with bad kids, look at these kids, I'm like, oh, dude, look at these bad kids, look at how bad these kids are. These are terrible kids. I'm like, oh, these are your kids. Yeah, the kids is bad, but did I know what that means? It means you're some bad parents. And people say, like, oh, these kids, you know, these kids are bad because they, they got no respect and everybody gave them trophies. I'm like, oh, you know, the kids didn't give the trophies to themselves. Y'all some punk behind parents. Y'all y'all did this. And for you NFL franchises, your front offices, your front offices did this mess. You have no draft picks. You have no players. You're getting bounced out in the first round. Or you're getting bounced out. And because and, and blame your front offices. Don't blame the player. Don't blame the league. Blame yourselves. It's your own nonsense. You own your stuff. That's my rant this evening, y'all. Take it easy.